Kia ora. hello, welcome back. I am indeed alive. I have updates. I have made progress. Um, however, I filmed this set of, of clips um, a few months ago now, so what I'll do is I'll make this video quick. Um, you will get to see where I was. In the meantime, I'll record some more clips and uh, give you a much more recent update very, very soon. Thanks for your patience, and it's good to be back. Um, I've attached the insulative uh, rail joiners to the electrofog points as is needed um, and what is desired and I've just connected them up basically to all my this is my second radius um, set track curve uh, there will be some set track points at the end and basically what I'm, I've just uh, marked out um, where my power connectors need to be for the various tracks so the dots mean, I'm going to attempt at the ends there, and the dots mean that the power gets all the way through. The X means I need to add in a separate power joiner. So I have, uh, I bought the Pico ones, you all know and love. Um, the pre-soldered ones, which I'll be able to use in some places, uh, but I'll have to do a little bit of soldering myself. I haven't made any progress yet because I need some help with the woodwork, and I'm waiting to find some time to get around to asking for that help. Um, once I've built the baseboard up though, I will get cracking pretty swiftly thereafter. New additions in this video include the three coaches. I have now got a Mark II micro buffet, which will go nicely in my other Mark II rake, and two more Pullman coaches, as you can see. Slowly building up my uh, Pullman Express train there. With the two other coaches I have, the nightcap bar, I now have a couple more Mark I SOs. In normal blue and grey, I think I have a small Pullman train. So that you might see whizzing around on occasion, along obviously with the Mark IIs. Not only stock, but kits. I have bought the new service station kit from Metcom, as well as the coaching inn. Um, while I was there, I decided to treat myself to the market stalls as well. Um, I have, I've opened up the market stalls and it's quite it's small as you'd guess. Um, the kit is in basically two parts, the covers and the wooden bits. And that's basically it. So I'll do a mini on that. I might also do a mini on these other two, uh, but we'll see. I haven't opened these two yet and don't actually know where they're going to go on the layout. Um, as you can see I still have the, the layout board to actually build. Um, once that's done I can put the track down after drilling holes through for the, the dropper wires. As you can see I've connected them all up. I've also been cutting some of the track uh, to length. So we'll see how we get on with that. Once all that base stuff is put together, I can actually get on a cracking with designing out where I want what buildings. Um, I have a vague idea of what I want. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Another Revolution purchase has arrived. These are obviously the Class B tankers. These ones are unbranded in black. On the left you have the first is the triple pack and on the right I have the single um, to ensure I have at least four different running numbers. Um, you, these have probably been done to death by now, you'll have seen these plenty. Um, detail is incredible, the weight is really satisfying, the look of them, like how close the couplers are, the, the, the buffers are, is, is just excellent. You can see the little marks where the, the panel was from the previous branding. Just excellent, excellent models. To the same high quality standard as the uh, Pendolinos that I have. Also, of course, with the distinctive uh, Revolution branding. One cool thing about the uh, packaging, which you might not spot initially, is that they actually are somewhat stackable. You can see in the corner that little dip. dip. They've actually got little uh, um, sticky edit bits that help them stack together, so they actually hold each other in place, which is a nifty little feature, actually. When I'm, because uh, I tend to leave my rolling stock out of the boxes uh, for easy access, um, and being able to rely on the, on the on the boxes left over to actually hold each hold themselves together and keep stacked is actually really nice. Um, good little feature there. Uh, nice little consideration there by Revolution. So thanks for that, guys. 
I also got the two triple pack SO ones. Um, again, these aren't particularly my era, perhaps, um, being preferable to, uh, well, having a preference for the 80s, uh, maybe late 70s. Um, I know some of these carried on into the 90s. Um, I need to do a bit more research as to which ones. Um, but I, I originally bought these, or at least uh, committed to buying these um, just to help the, the crowdfunding kind of carry on and, and, and come to fruition if you will. Um, so I'll do a bit more research as to how and when I might be able to use these ones. Um, I might uh, be able to squeeze these into a layout with the uh, Engage Society Hunslet Shunter that's coming out. Um, because I know there's an SO branded version of that and see if these can't go with that and make their own layout maybe. But again just a superb model. Um, obviously the detail packs that come with it are, are quite useful, um, allowing you to have the SO logo kind of stand off the body of the wagon a bit. Um, the printing over is, is, is great, even on the, the models as they are, um, but I, I, I do think that little extra detail is, uh, is, is makes, a, makes a huge difference, especially when you already have so much detail available on the model. Um, it makes sense to then just complete the look, if you will. Um, you might have noticed that the unbranded ones have patches. I don't know if you did actually, the light's not great. Um, but where these numbers are on the end, um, there are patches on the unbranded ones of where these numbers would have been. Um, which again is, is a really subtle thing, but it does add to uh, the level um, that's going on here. And these are just excellent, excellent models all around. Uh, yeah, I won't go into too much detail, but I did have to show them off now that they've finally arrived in New Zealand. And finally, um, for this month's mini update, I have three new pendolinos. Um, at the front here we have three Niner 001, Virgin Pioneer. Over here we have three Niner 005, I think, Taylor Paul. Um, it's an homage to uh, where I spent most of my youth um, in and around Liverpool. And finally, the Ulstrom uh, liveried Pendolino, which is the 11 car variant. Um, just purely because I enjoyed its livery so much, I think it looks really quite beautiful. Um, these are all the DCC sound versions. And uh, whilst they probably won't fit on this layout, as you can see, they're extending the full length of this one siding, and that's only four of the nine or eleven cars. Um, they do just about run on my Randy layout, um, so as I'm keeping that for now, uh, they might well make an appearance on that from time to time. And depending on how well this layout goes, I have got a spare uh, top ply board, um, so I might recreate the Randy layout. Um, from scratch, using a new board basically, um, with lessons learned and such. So you will see these from time to time, along with the uh, other Virgin Voyages I have, and my more modern rolling stock. Um, I, I, I'm vaguely in love with these, they are actually stunning models, uh, really detailed. I've got the light bars in all of them, and I don't know, it's just, it's just excellent, excellent produ product um, by Rapido uh, and Revolution. So thanks to those guys. Amazing.